And welcome back to the vlog. So I just got home from a two week family trip to Spain and three kind of unique observations I had from there. They're just different than American culture are one, no one wears baseball hats. So like these were like non-existent over there. I wore mine like on day one and then I never wore it again because I felt way too out of place. Two, the waiters and waitresses, they do not work for tips. Three, no one uses chewing tobacco. Anyway, just three random observations I had for my trip to Spain. That said, there is so much history and so much culture there in Spain. It was really cool to see and just kind of take in and be a part of. Uh, I'll be honest though, it was totally overwhelming for me. I live more of a nomadic life and being in a huge city with so many people was just a little bit chaotic for me, but it was a really cool place to have a camera, a really cool place to just see and document. With that said, here is a montage of clips from Spain. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that little montage. So there is five questions about hunting photography and my career in the hunting industry that I get asked a ton. And so today I wanted to dive in and answer those questions. Uh, but, but first, before we jump in, if you could like this video, if you like it, of course, subscribe if you wanna see more, that would help me out a ton. Okay, here we go. So the first question is, what exactly do you do for a living? So I'm a freelance photographer and content creator and I primarily work in the hunting and outdoor media space. I'm not paid to vlog, though vlogging has certainly opened up some doors in the video creation uh, world, which is pretty cool. I started vlogging for fun and just kind of as a passion project and as a way to share stories, push out unique, more utility-based content on a different platform. Second question I get asked quite a lot is from those people who are new to photography and they ask me, what camera would you recommend? You need a camera that's small, lightweight, compact, something that's probably gonna fit in your pocket, something that's gonna be really easily accessible. If you have a big giant DSLR and you're packing around and say you're hunting, you're probably gonna have that camera shoved in your backpack, therefore you're not gonna be shooting that many photos with it. But if you have something small and lightweight, something that'll fit in your pocket, heck, a cell phone. Cell phones these days take outstanding photos. Then you pair a cell phone on like a phone scope and you can video through a spotting scope, uh, you're gonna get epic wildlife uh, photos and video. So the best camera is the one you're gonna use and something that's small, compact, and lightweight. My number one recommendation for people that are just getting into it is seriously, use your cell phones, use your smartphones. Those things take epic photos. Up from a smartphone, Sony A6000 series, interchangeable lens, mirrorless camera from Sony. They're fairly small, pretty compact. Um, they won't they won't fit in like a pants pocket, but if you had like a like a waist like a big waist belt pocket on your on your backpack, it'd fit there. These cameras they pack a serious punch though. Really high quality photos and video from them. They have all the specs that a lot of the high end pro level cameras do, but at a fraction of the price and a fraction of the size and weight. Right, so the third question I get asked a lot is what misconceptions are there around hunting photography and just photography in general? This is a two-part answer. 
first misconception is that people think I spend copious amounts of days outside in the field shooting. Uh, and that's partly true, but the reality is, is that I spend probably twice as much time uh, at home in front of the computer as I do in the field shooting. That's not a complaint, that's just a reality of what I do. So the second part to that, and this isn't necessarily a misconception, it's just something to consider, is that if you do get into photography, you're not just gonna want your camera, with the camera, you want a computer and you want an editing program to go along with that. Uh, so I've got a MacBook Pro, I edited all my photos through Adobe Lightroom. I've got like 500,000 images in my Lightroom catalog. I can edit them all on there, I can upload them directly to the internet, I can upload them directly to my website and then where clients can access them. So anyway, you don't just want the camera, you want the camera, a computer and an editing program. The fourth question I get asked a lot is, what's the hardest part about being a freelance photographer? This is also a two-part answer. First off, there is no guarantee of a paycheck, as a lot of what I do is project-based. I'll do a project and I'll get paid X amount, and then I'll pitch and maybe do a project and get paid X amount, but I really don't know where my next paycheck is gonna come from. There's also, there's, not, there's no retirement plan or health insurance along with that, so that can be tough as well. Secondly, working alone is really hard. At my previous job, I worked in an agency, there was like 10 guys within 20 yards of me, and we would always have brainstorm sessions. Anytime someone had creator's block, you just talk to the person next to you and you would just work through ideas. And the brainwaves were flowing in that place. So now when I work alone, it's really hard when I do get creator's block to get over that hump. Fifth and final question is, did you go to school for photography? Nope, I went to Montana State University in Bozeman, Montana, and I got a general business marketing degree. I think the skill and the act and just like the trade of shooting photos can all be learned, uh, whether it's online. You, I mean, I, I self-taught. There's so many resources on the internet. The rest of it, honestly, it's just, it's left up to your own creative freedom on what you want to do with it. I'll link some of the resources below that I've used. The, the value of college is, in my opinion, the networking opportunities that you get through college. The people that you meet, uh, building your people skills. For me, when I was a freshman, so very early on in college, uh, I gained an internship, again, through networking. That internship eventually led to a job after college, and then that eventually led to me going out on my own and being a freelance photographer. I think that no matter what career you're pursuing, just network, 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 like and learning how to network and be a people person, uh, those are gonna propel you so far in any career that you choose. All right, that is a wrap for today. I'm gonna end this vlog with some clips from a flamenco show in Spain. We'll see you next time.